it's not just floating hands. You're going to see the full gauntlets. You're going to see your chest piece. You're going to see the batarang on your chest. The fact that the game is Quest 3 means that we are le fully leveraging that hardware uh, and pushing it as far as we possibly can. Great looking real-time shadows working on Quest 3. It's like shadows being casted into these environments with you know fans and those kind of classic, uh, classic ways. When you are just walking down a hall and there's a light behind you, you see Batman's shadow ahead of you and you're just reminded that you are Batman. Boy, are you in for a true treat. We're about to get all of the juicy details of Batman Arkham Shadow coming exclusively to the Quest 3 with Ryan Payton, the founder and studio head of Camouflage. Well, Ryan, thank you so much for taking the time to meet with me. I, I can tell you right now, I am so stoked to talk to you and thank you from the bottom of my heart for bringing Batman to VR like this because as you, as you can tell, Batman is my favorite superhero of all time. Uh, I've got shirts, comics, I've got tons of comics, so <laughs> are you the same way? <laughs> I'm the same way. Grew up loving Batman, still love Batman uh, to this day, my favorite my favorite superhero. Uh, yeah, no question. So yeah, feeling very uh, honored and, and very lucky uh, that we we can we can bring uh, not only Batman to uh, to quest three in a in a big way in a must have t title for this holiday, but uh, but an Arkham. Batman game, uh, which I'm sure we'll, we'll talk more about. Yeah, yeah. Arkham games, uh, un unbelievable series for sure. And, and the fact that you're able to uh, to really uh, embody that series in VR is something I'm very excited to talk about. What was it like before we get into the game itself, being able to actually take the concept of Arkham Batman and make it so that you can step into the boots of that character? Well, it all started with, with a phone call from from meta uh as we were uh wrapping up iron man vr and uh they had, they had played the game well and they 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 they, they said they loved it and uh they thought that we were the, we would be the perfect developers uh to do an even bigger game than that a quest 3 exclusive big holiday title for 2024 um as not not just as a, as a batman fully realized batman game from the from the ground up built for vr but a, a official authentic new entry into the arkham franchise what do you think ryan and my initial thought, if I'm being completely honest to you, was, or my, I guess my, my initial f feeling was fear, which you know I guess is, is, a, is, a, is a reoccurring theme in the, in the Batman uh, yeah, IP, sure. uh, right? So perhaps very appropriate. And the reason I was afraid is because, as as a big Arkham fan, um, even before we got the phone call, I knew how important. Uh, the, the locomotion is of Batman in the Arkham franchise, the grapple gun, uh, being able to slide into vents, uh, go underneath the floor grates and sneak up behind guys and take them out in such a very really seamless and just really user and uh, user friendly way. And also the combat. Mm. They, uh, it's not an exaggeration to say that Arkham Asylum revolutionized oh, third yeah. person combat oh, uh, yeah. in, for, for, for console games, right? And so translating that into VR I wasn't sure we could do it. I didn't think it was even possible, to be honest with you. And so I remember exactly where I was when I got the phone call. And I remember exactly where I went after I hung up the phone and said, well, think about it. Thank you. Uh, and I went to uh, to the design pit where one of my, um, with, with, where the design director of of, uh, of Arkham Shadow uh, was hanging out. Um, his name is Ryan Darcy. And I told him about the phone call and I said, oh, I still know if we could do this combat. Like we should, I would love to do Arkham, right? He said, Ryan, it's easy. We could do it. And and I said, how, how the heck are you going to do it? It's like, well, we're, VR, to your point, Matt, right? It's all about embodying mm. these characters, right? You got to feel like you're Batman. So you're going to look down. You're going to see the full, it's not just floating hands. You're going to oh, see the full awesome. gauntlets. You're going to see your chest piece. You're going to see the batarang on your chest. Um, you're going to see your legs, the whole, yeah, the whole suit. You're going to feel like Batman. And not only when you're walking around and doing locomotion, which we could figure out because we figured out with Iron Man, right, Ryan? Mm. Yeah, we did. Okay. Yeah, we did. But with combat. I said, well, what? You, so you're just gonna walk up to an enemy and start punching at him? He's like, no. In our in the Arkham games, Batman doesn't walk up to enemies; he punches towards enemies. Mm. That was the key, and that's where it all started, and that's where the prototype began. And it was very much a fluid, rhythm-based, in large part, Beat Saber and some time dilation from Super Hot uh, from Super Hot VR, mm. all mixed together in a way that feels super fluid. You get into the flow state like you just do in the flat screen games. And once we were able to execute that and improve it through a prototype, that's when I started feeling like that that level of confidence that yes, we can deliver on that true fantasy that you're talking about about becoming Batman in a in a big full-scale uh, VR game and that was 
three and a half years ago. <laughs> that was that was kind of my next big thing because combat. I, I have talked to a lot of people um, just because I've been excited about the game. I love the idea of it. And the one thing that comes up a lot is the combat because it is so fluid. Um, and as you said, it revolutionized. A lot of games have copied that style now. You know, the um, style where you're moving from enemy to enemy quickly and you're um, parrying, you know, blows or, or you're, you know, attacking someone from a distance because they're about to attack you. You know, the, the whole feeling that you get when you're playing the game is very fast paced, but it does. It feels very fluid and almost like uh, a dance. Talking about the combat, is there anything uh, that you can kind of give us that shines a little bit more light on that? So like, how are, how, how is it going to, to function? You mentioned it's kind of like a flow state, kind of like a rhythm, rhythmic thing. Is there any, any way of kind of describing that without seeing it that gives a little more, more of that? Yeah. And I'll do my best, uh, even with the understanding that, you know, the picture says a thousand words, oh, yeah, right. Yeah. And so when we get to Gamescom, when we reveal co uh, combat and full gameplay, uh, there, I think that's, everything's going to really come into picture, but in the meantime, I'll do my best to describe yeah, yeah. what that experience is going to be like, especially, uh, Really, really appreciate the opportunity to do this with with you and in your community because um, I can skip a lot of the steps in terms of, you know, how VR functions and 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 <laughs> and we can kind of like go into like talk do the real talk, which oh, yeah. is um, one of the interesting challenges about VR um, that I think people don't necessarily know when you're developing in it is that one to one movement isn't always the best policy. Sometimes it is good. I, I'm, I'm sure I, I don't know. I know you've played Walking Dead Saints, Saints and Sinners. Yeah. If 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 the if the weapons were just completely one to one and they felt like just like with no weight at all, it wouldn't feel as good. That weight that they add to it, um, the physics they add to it. Mm -hmm. So similar kind of philosophy for for Arkham Shadows Combat is that it's not so like some of the boxing games where you have free flow where you can punch and dodge whenever you want. Just like the Arkham games. There is a time and place for it, and there's a good time and place for it, and then there's a bad time and place for it. And so players start by, as I mentioned, punching towards enemies, which can actually have them lunge across across the room at an enemy, time dilation right in the face, and then start your combo. Boom, 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 which is some of the Beat Saber, Supernatural-inspired uh, UI elements that are coming at you. And then... As what, you, as what happens with all the other Arkham games, it's annoying, but it's also part of the magic is that you get interrupted mm. and you see a counter icon show up on your right side or your left side. And uh, depending on where it is, you put your hand up and now Batman blocks that into incoming um, attack, especially if you do on the right timing, you keep your, your meter going. And then we flip you exactly to that next enemy and then you continue your combo. And as you're building your combo, you go into a special combo. And then, yeah, Batman's brutality really comes across um, <laughs> as you're kind of building up that combo meter. Um, and that's not to mention just like the gadgets that we're integrating into the into the combat flow, whether it's the Batarang or the smoke bombs that you can pull off your gauntlet and throw down, um, whether it's um, also the, all the, the range of, of, of enemy types. Um, so we were integrating those as well in terms of like, how are you going to do a, a, a knife dodge in VR? How are you going to take care of those shield enemies in VR? All of those elements, that's what's <laughs> taken us three and a half years is to yeah. translate so many of the core Arkham elements, not just combat, but so many of them recreating them for VR and making sure that they just feel amazing. It's not just about uh, mimicking what's happening in the flat, flat screen world, which is amazing, not taking anything away right. from that. But as you know, you get this extra dimension mm -hmm. and you get this extra level of fidelity, right? As, as, we're, as I was mentioning, you get to see your, your bat suit, you got your, you got your motion controls, um, you've got these great lenses with the Quest 3 and, um, the, and the, the amazing haptics. And it's just that that extra layer of, of interactivity that you have in this world, which introduces lots of interesting design problems, which we could go down, <laughs> down that path if you're interested. But it also introduces so many amazing opportunities. In fact, I'll give you one example that um, is something that people – I've never I meant, never mentioned this to anybody. So here's, here's – uh, Matt, here's your world <laughs> exclusive. Um, it's something – it's a very subtle thing that – Invariably, most play testers or internal play testers bring up as some of the, one of their favorite moments in our in our game thus far, and that is climbing as Batman, and uh, you can also grapple up to spaces as well. But climbing and then seeing uh, if you remember in the Arkham games, you, where you have explosive gel and you mm -hmm. can see that kind of um, that repeated uh, asset, so you know it's an explosive gel wall. You can also go into Detective Vision in our game and see it there. Um, but there's something about physically climbing up. And seeing one of those explosive wall uh, 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 textures, mm. looking down, <laughs> pulling your your gel launcher off of your utility belt, and then shooting it at 
the uh, at the wall and then having it explode and then pulling yourself up into that now <laughs> open space is kind of brings back the magic that I think you felt and I felt, you know, first trying VR many, many years ago. Mm-hmm. It's that that is that is where some of the stuff gets really, really exciting. So that's that's amazing. And, and kind of that flows into the next thing I was going to ask about one of the more other more important parts about this type of game. You mentioned climbing is the locomotion. Um, how did you kind of tackle trying to make it feel um, like you could really freely move as Batman in virtual reality? So, yeah, as, a, as, I, as I mentioned, um, you know, early on in the project, right when we were pitching Warner Brothers, asking them if they were cool with us jumping into this uh, Arkham world that they've done such a great job of, of, of shepherding through those amazing games, right, is, is it, part of that conversation was in the prototypes. So I, I talked a little bit about the the combat the, the the combat prototype, but yeah, one of the other the, the two prototypes was uh, the other one was focused on locomotion, and uh, really focusing on the grapple gun. And and I hate to hate this I don't want to come across as arrogant, but I think it's really just to the, to the strength of our team. The same engineer who did the 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 locomotion for Iron Man with the motion controls, making you feel like you're Iron Man flying around the world. He that was his first job was to get the grapple gun to work and. The zip and it has a feel to go up onto the top of buildings and um and and then glide down and everything and of course he crushed it and of course <laughs> it was amazing and of course he did it in record time so it shouldn't be that easy but um i think it's in large part thanks to the incredible team that we have at camouflage the fact that we've been making vr games since 2015 um and and yeah we can and then we could also just learn from the Arkham franchise, we're pulling a lot of those elements in there. So we're not just starting from scratch, obviously. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now, as far as locomotion goes, are you able to like freely walk around in an area in a level that you're as Batman? It's not like click point to point, right? Yeah. It's, it's one of those, those things that I, I wish, uh, yeah, there's times where I, I wish I could just show you, show you all, but uh, we have these beats. <laughs> it's a, it's a relatively short period we have from announced to launch. So hopefully pe- people can bear with us that we have, you know, we've got a handful of, of beats that are hang- hanging us to launch. And so sorry for being so cagey about the gameplay footage, but we want to just be as, as, as genuine and as close to ship as possible. So no, everybody knows how mm-hmm. we'll see how great the game looks, how, how, how great it all flows. Um, but to answer your question, because I really want to show people how the environments look, because it's not, well, to set expectations correctly, it's not like Arkham City or Arkham Knight, right. where you are flying around a big open space. Mm-hmm. Um, it very intentionally is inspired by Arkham Asylum. Pretty cool game to be inspired mm-hmm. by and be mm-hmm. modeling your, your, your title af- uh, after. So you've got big open spaces like the courtyard or some of these other areas that they have in the game where you can go into a, a, a cape glide and, and glide down to these areas and go many, many, many feet or many, many meters um, and, 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 and glide kick into enemies or, and zip up into secret areas. So it's got a sense of openness, mm-hmm. right? Uh, with the Metroidvania inspired structure, just like Asylum. So you've got your big courtyard, you've got multiple dungeons that you can go in and out of. Once you complete the dungeon and, and, and get the, the appropriate gadget from that dungeon, you can use that gadget to go back to other dungeons and then unlock other secrets. So very inspired with, with the amazing job that Rocksteady did with, with Asylum. And uh, that's the kind of the degree of freedom that we that we're that we're giving players uh, with this game. A lot of people have questioned uh, with the great work that they did, off, obviously on Arkham VR when it first uh, came out a long time ago, a long long time ago now. Um, that was you know point to point jumping with you couldn't actually walk from place to place. Um, but in this game, you've designed it for like a, a more of a free movement style, right? That's correct. Yeah. Okay. So we looked very closely at, at Arkham VR, uh, studied it. Uh, We've learned, we continue to learn lots of great things from that game. I think they did, Rock City did an incredible job uh, given the amount of time that they had, mm-hmm. uh, launch title for PlayStation VR. Um, and in fact, uh, I'm, I'm such a big fan of that, that game that I ended up uh, stalking uh, one of the leads of that project um, who had left Rock City after shipping Arkham VR, who had uh, who has worked at Rock City since the very beginning with Arkham Asylum, shipped four Arkham games and convinced him to join Camouflage full time and is one of the other art design wow. directors on the game, a gentleman named Bill Green. Mm. And he, it's in large part thanks to him and his guidance and his mentorship to me and all the other folks uh, at, at Camouflage about this is what it takes to for to, to really embody that uh, that rock steady design formula of where it feels intuitive and smooth and powerful. Um, and we've applied that all those all those lessons into yes a much bigger than, game than Arkham VR, large part because we have a much bigger team behind it and much much more time than they had, and so yes free free locomotion, um, and uh, and 
and and and, and much more expansive, feature rich game. So mm. in terms of length, we're looking at somewhere between uh, the game I know you've you've played, which Iron Man VR, mm. somewhere much definitely bigger than that, more feature rich than that game. And we're trying to get close to that asylum um, mm. length. We're going to be somewhere in the middle there, I think. Um, but we'll see how the next uh, you know number of months goes before as we as we close out development. Well, that sounds amazing. So that's you've answered a lot of the questions I've already I've already had. Um, the next thing I kind of want to just touch on. Um, you mentioned uh, gadgets. Now a big part of what Batman does because he is who he is and he isn't a super powered person is the gadgets. It gives him a, you know that level up over his opponents and the environments. Um, well, how did you transfer some of those things into VR and make it so that they were intuitive to use? Yeah, that's a. It's been a, such a, a big, uh, big focus for for th for the team over the number of years. I mean, yeah. So basically, you, I mean, I bet you could, uh, Matt, with your experience and everything, I bet you could guess accurately what our our development process was once we once we checked the box of 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 combat and locomotion. <laughs> okay, what's next on the list? Okay, we got to figure out boss battles. We have to figure out investigation. Right, because you're those are a big part of the Arkham games as well, and we got to figure out gadgets, and we got to do these big cinematic and story moments. But back to the gadgets, um, making sure that each of the gadgets feel uh, feels great and appropriate for for VR. And we looked really closely to how Rocksteady did the grapple gun in Arkham VR, and how they did the batarang, and how it all felt. Um, but we knew we had to go beyond that, right? Um, and so I mentioned the 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 the, the gel launcher, um, and that. Just to kind of drill down to that, that that gadget for a second, the added fidelity that VR offers is uh, both a, both a blessing and a curse. Because um, what we found was, if we give when we gave players the ability to just draw whatever gel they wanted to, of course you're going to get some very work on inappropriate uh, drawings <laughs> from, from from game developers who, uh, who who've done this motion maybe one too many times. But also sometimes it just didn't feel like Batman because. We just the player just want to go through quickly through a space, so they just put up like a, a little blop here and then blow up the the wall. So what we decided to do for for that um, for that gadget in particular, um, well, actually I have one other design issue that it introduced is that players are used to the Arkham games where they walk where Batman walks right up to the to the to the wall that he wants to uh, to blow up, right, and then he he draws the bat symbol in the, with the bat gel, right. Well, we don't want it's not as comfortable in VR to walk right up to a wall as you know. So what we did is we actually borrowed uh, the 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 explosive gel gadget from Arkham Origins Blackgate, mm. which is one of uh, the games that uh, our sister studio, now part of Oculus Studios, Armature developed, and it's more of a projectile. And so it has so now players know that the, the way it's all designed is that it gets it, it shoots out, um, you know, at at a at a, at a slightly long, longer distance. So that way you're not just like right up against the wall. And when it, what it shoots out is this this gel that then forms in a bat symbol. Mm, that's cool. So it's really elegant. And then you can detonate whenever you want. You can detonate it when other enemies go by. When you go into detective vision, <laughs> see if the guys coming by, take them out that way. Um, integrate into predator encounters, um, all that. So that's I think just one example of how like again the added fidelity of, of VR I think ultimately has really benefited the player experience in, in Arkham Shadow. Amazing. And you mentioned the detective mode. That is is a big part of Batman as well. Um, and in the Arkham games, obviously there's some elements of detecting, but in VR, I imagine there's almost more you can do with that because you look around and you can actually see from a first person perspective and it's a little bit uh, different to develop for. What was it like kind of creating and what did you do to create some detective moments for Batman? Yeah, absolutely. The, the detective vision was another one off those, those, that list of Things we had to do in the first year to figure out how is this all going to feel like in VR, right? So, it it very much looks in in the, within within that immersive device, the Quest Three. It looks like you would imagine it would look if you were fully immersed in in Detective Vision. So it's that more of that blue hue. We've got the enemies with like there's there's skeletons being represented with uh, in, in orange. You can see what weapons they're carrying, uh, what their state, their different kind of status uh, uh, status uh, um, uh, updates are, and, and and so that's been just like I think a really good and, and, and an interesting element. And I'm not ready to declare victory on this just yet, uh, Matt, but one of the traditional design challenges from all the Arkham games previous to us is that a lot of players play a lot of the game in detective vision or detective mode, depending on the game. Um, and it doesn't always make for the most compelling YouTube videos, I'll, I'll say, when I watch those um, as I continue to learn about the Arkham franchise. Um, but when you are playing in VR, uh, when you're fully immersed in the detective vision, what I found, and I know that a lot of other players uh, internally have been playing the game find, is that it's it's 
when it's when you're fully immersed in it, it's it's a it's a great tool, but you don't always want to stay in it. And I think that's actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. I want people to see this beautiful world that that our our three D artists and two D artists have been building over the last number of years, um, with all the great shaders and the the real time shadows we're putting in the game. Um, the fact that the game is Quest Three means that we are lev fully leveraging that hardware. Uh, and pushing it as far as we possibly can. And and I want people to see it in all of its glory, even though mm -hmm. Detective Vision is super cool, but I want them to stay in, in, the, in, the, in the more fully immersive world <laughs> as much as possible. Sure, definitely. So that kind of actually, it kind of segues into one of the things I was going to ask too, I might as well ask it now since you've mentioned it. Since this is a Quest 3 exclusive, um, obviously it's one of the first um, official Quest 3 exclusives to leverage the power of the Quest 3. Having that additional power, what would you able to accomplish that sh that that you kind of might not be able to do previously, or or what maybe something you want to call out specifically that the Quest Three allowed you to do that you think people will be impressed by? Yeah, I can give you I can give you yeah two two good good examples right off the right, right off the bat maybe even three. Um, so one is characters are so important in the Arkham franchise and being up close and personal with them, you know, again leveraging the immersive nature of VR is something that we definitely wanted to to ex fully execute on. Uh, and so making sure that we have wrinkle maps and and that the, the characters look really terrific up close and personal. And I have to say the character art team has done a, an amazing job. Um, it ha hasn't always been easy. We had to learn how you get that Arkham aesthetic in VR. Um, and so that, I think that we're leveraging some of the power of Quest 3 with that level of fidelity we're getting with characters. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is the, the environments. So uh, before we got the, the Quest 3 dev kits, uh, we were not a frame rate. And we were creating some fairly big spaces. Again, we're not fully open world, but we have some pretty big Arkham Asylum level areas, right? And we weren't sure if we were going to hit performance um, on when we were developing early on, when we only had access to Quest 2, for example, knowing that the next hardware was coming. And so uh, what a sigh of relief for the team <laughs> when we finally get the dev kits and we know we're going to be on Quest 3 and we... we and I'm I'm not exaggerating. I'm not making this up. We were really not only relieved, but pleasantly surprised to the degree of which the hardware was able to handle the game and help and just instantly allow us to hit frame rate, which was uh, just a, a again just so 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 wonderful for the team. So we didn't have to scale down the game. We can really just uh, execute on the, on what our original vision was over the last three and a half years and build it out. And then and then lastly, um, I had this this funny epiphany, Matt, uh, early last year which is we were kind of circling around what the game was going to be titled. We knew what the themes of the game were going to be. Um, and I was thinking about what what really makes Batman special. And one of them is like the noir aspect of Batman, right? And the lighting and that high contrast, right? And guys, we, we have to figure out real-time shadows with this game. Ryan, point to some other good, you know, great looking quest games that do real-time shadows. We'll be, we'll, we're going to do it, guys, because we have, because we we're on Quest Three, and we've got we've got a really talented team, we can do it. And all credit goes to the team. Um, in a fairly short amount of time, they were able to get performant, great looking real time shadows working on Quest Three. Um, that not only enhances the environment with like shadows being casted into these environments with like you know fans and those kind of classic uh, right. classic ways, to do it, the enemy shadows so you can you know where enemies are going around the corner, um, which you don't oftentimes get in a lot of VR games these days, right? Mm. Um, and then and then lastly, when you are just walking down a hall and there's a light behind you, you see Batman's shadow ahead of you and you're just reminded <laughs> that you are Batman, right? And that is that is a magical feeling. One thing that I think has popped up a little bit um, from some people I've seen in comments online is how tied into the actual Arkham story is it and do you have to have played the other Arkham games to actually play this? Well, that's a really, really good question uh, that I haven't, haven't been asked yet because, well, the first one, yes, it's, Highly authentic. Uh, we we've in short in a short amount of time had to get a PhD understanding of the of the Arkham franchise, and it's something that I took really really seriously, and the team has taken very seriously. Again, we're all fans of the franchise, but there's a difference between being a fan and then having to know everything about it and study the games and play them over and over and over again. Thankfully, we have amazing partners at, at Warner Brothers Interactive and DC who could answer all of our questions about hey, what was this the scene really? All about or what, what happened in this time period here they were really wonderful and gave us all the all the answers that they could and sometimes they didn't have the answer because that wasn't being that hadn't been developed up until that point and then they encouraged us to obviously work with them but to come up with great ideas for how we could add more uh, uh really exciting moments in into the into the arkham franchise so it's been an education 
way more difficult than I expected. <laughs> um, having come from Metal Gear and Halo, I thought I could jump into a big, complex, intertwined uh, franchise like this, like like Arkham. But it's been it's it's it was a lot. It's a lot deeper than I think I, I originally um, uh, remembered. I think so. That's been fun, but deep deep knowledge of the Arkham franchise is not required uh, to enjoy. Uh, Arkham Shadow. In fact, that's one of the reasons why we set the game early into Batman's career. So the game is set uh, in the in the kind of the chronological time time frame um, after the first game in the in the in the canon, which is Arkham Origins, and before Arkham Asylum. So there's a there's a gap of time there that we're setting the game in. So Batman's still relatively new um, to this career. He's got a lot of things to learn, a lot of built up anger, um, a pretty unremorseful, violent version of Batman that I thought was the perfect version of Batman for people to embody. Mm -hmm. And like him, using the, again, the immersive power of VR and storytelling, learn something about not only Batman, but perhaps learning something about themselves mm -hmm. as they're playing uh, the story where we're really going to take him in some pretty dark places and ultimately have him grow as a, as a person, as a hero in a way that, again, I hope really inspires uh, people who, who play through the whole game and get to the end credits. One other question about the story, story wise, I have a couple of them, but one thing I, I just thought of while we were talking, um, and it, it may, it's a totally different type of story, so that it might not necessarily fit. Um, but with like with Iron Man, when you guys did Iron Man, some of my favorite moments were just those kind of those momentary times when you were Stark before you had to go off into battle. Is there anything like that in this where you're kind of embodying? I don't know if it's maybe Batman in the Batcave or if it's Bruce at points in times where you're kind of able to quietly reflect that you are Batman. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, trying to think of what I should say beyond that, because uh, obviously I just don't uh, don't want to spoil some oh, of those no, no, really no, definitely, yeah. moments. But um, I think it's also just kind of in the core DNA of the stories that yeah. me and and Brendan Murphy, uh, my my writing partner on this uh, for Camouflage since the very beginning, and this now this expansive <laughs> writing team we have behind this game, we have right now I think four or five writers on on Arkham Shadow, all super talented. And I think we all kind of share the same um, philosophy in terms of uh, we're very theme focused. We're very uh, we're very focused on the uh, one of the company pillars, which is meaningful games, and uh, we're really focused on um, balancing out those big bombastic action filled moments of Batman with the the the, the quieter, more intimate thoughtful moments that Batman also has, which is one of the many, many reasons why I love this character so much and so much, so much of the bat Batman medium over the years. Yeah. I'll, I, I shouldn't even say this cause it's just gonna be annoying, but there's this, there's a, there's a scene in, uh, we should talk about once you've played the game uh, in, uh, in the second chapter and people are going to be, I think in a good way in, in, in like in the spirit of Arkham that oftentimes will surprise you. People are going to be like, I've, I've <laughs> never seen Batman do this or have this kind of be in this type of situation in the comics, in the films, in the TV shows, or in the games. And uh, it was it's, it's just, I think, um, it all really speaks again to the to the creative um, freedom that we've been afforded by, by our partners. And I, I couldn't be more, more thankful for that. Kind of giving a little bit of a free reign to you, um, as far as this project goes, uh, Batman Arkham Shadow, what do you think that you want uh, people out there to know about the project like your passion behind this what, what's the thing that gets you excited about about seeing people play this well first of all be, be very careful if when you give a guy like me the reins of anything um <laughs> as, as my team watching uh as will attest to uh yeah i'm gonna answer so in, in that spirit i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna give you two answers because okay. i guess i'm in control for just for a minute or two um the, the first thing that i really want people to take away from this game is uh just like the love and, and, and care that went into this uh into the work that we've done over the last three and a half years working on this game we are both equal parts uh, thankful and terrified <laughs> of playing in this franchise that we know countless people love and we want to do right by them and we know that by doing right by them it's not paint by the numbers translate mathematical translation of what Arkham is into VR and be done with it. Because I think that is actually taking away from some of the great things about the Arkham franchise, which I was talking about, the surprise elements, mm -hmm. really pushing the medium. Um, I want to give Arkham fans, some of whom are out there, let's be honest, would love, perhaps would wish that Arkham Shadow was a, was a flat screen game. And no, no judgment from me. I get it. Um, but I want them, I want to 
through the next over the next the course of the next several months as we're showing off more of the game or show game gameplay at game at Gamescom. Over time, one of my goals is to convince them that um, this is this is not only a, a game, an Arkham game worth checking out because it's authentic and all and has all those features, but I, you're going to experience what Arkham is into a, in a totally different uh, level um, uh, through this game. That's the first thing, and then the second thing is more broad, and it's actually um, about the hardware um, and is in the Quest Three. Is that um, I've 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 worked on on titles, or I've I've had friends working on titles where there's a, sometimes a little bit of sense of, of guilt where you're working on this game, you're like, hey, buy this hardware to play this game, but you know that maybe there's not a deep catalog, and you I don't know if you you must feel this all the time mm. when you recommend VR. Oh, yeah. You're like, hey, you don't want people to have buyer's remorse, mm. right? But when 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 Arkham Shadow comes out, and hopefully we do our jobs right and deliver a great game, I'm so excited that people will when they when they finish the game, they've got dozens and dozens and dozens of terrific content that has been built up over the years, uh, that I know that you've covered and uh, and I've played and the team has played, uh, and I could I'm 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 holding back from like just starting rattling off <laughs> all the amazing games in the catalog, but what a what a what I think a great opportunity for VR and for the Quest ecosystem to bring a big audience in because of Arkham Shadow and then celebrate this incredible catalog that developers have been growing over the last number of years. I don't think I have any other questions. So unless there's anything specific that you wanted to say, that I think that's probably really good. Well, yeah, I just wanted to just, just to thank you and, and your community for for hanging in there. Um, I know that especially for for you, you, you know a lot about VR and you've played a lot of stuff. And um, I think you've, you've all been really... Uh, gracious with um, with us as we go through this process of going from, let's be honest, not a long time, about a half a year or so from announced to launch. <laughs> Te we're teasing you in, on May 1st, now Summer Game Fest. Uh, we've got our, our new story trailer that I think does a great job of laying out the world that we're creating. And now you know the world you're about to see as we start to reveal gameplay in, in August. So I appreciate everybody's patience. We want to show you the game as much as, uh, as, much as you want to see it. And, and hopefully um, once we do that, it's just like this this really fun race towards the end and um, you're getting your review codes. And, and then I'm sitting there the morning of the launch, you know, freaking out, like, what is Matt going to say about this game? What is everybody else going to say about this game? But I'm, I'm very much looking forward to that day. Well, I definitely appreciate uh, the love and care. It sounds like you've put into this game, not only as a Batman fan, but as a, as a VR developer, making sure that the game is not only like you mentioned, just taking the elements that create an Arkham game, but, taking what the best elements and then doing what's best for VR because uh, obviously it could have been done in such a way where you could have just kind of copied and pasted a lot of the elements together and then made a game but you took the time to really make sure that not only from a like a visuals and, and a hardware usage standpoint you, you took advantage of what you could take advantage of but you actually thoughtfully transitioned the elements that needed to be brought into VR in a way that will make them feel new but familiar. Yeah, I think you nailed it. Uh, that's really been what we've been up to for the last, you know, three and a half years. And uh, all credit goes to the team. Uh, we, we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for this incredible crew that's been with me for for a long time, working in VR and 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 really growing um, with along with it and 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 the support we've got from Meta. Right? I think I don't remember the last time we, we if, if we had talked about this, but you know, we became a first party studio uh, about a year and a half ago. Uh, we're honored to be part of uh, Oculus Studios and all the other incredible studios that are part of the the, the family here. And so, yeah, we're, we're all very, everybody here, we're just obsessed with with VR and MR and, and making, making the great content. So, yeah, very much looking forward to hearing what you have to say about the game once you get your hands on it and what your community has to say as well. There we go. I am now infinitely more excited for this game than I was before this interview. Now I can't wait for Gamescom to see some gameplay and maybe we'll get back together with Ryan afterwards and talk to see what more we can find out about this game. Are you excited for Batman Arkham Shadow coming to the Quest 3? Let me know down in the comments your thoughts and what you think of the gameplay elements in this video. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and happy questing.